They were here for the merch? Yeah. That's amazing. It's, it's amazing. amazing. The merch the is, amazing. is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. Welcome to the Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. August is Men's History Month, and August just feels man. And so today I have real men, mighty valor of men. Two men who are very accomplished in MMA, that's mixed martial arts. I have with me Jeff Glover. He's a former jit, jit, I mean jujitsu world champion. That's right. I also have with me Bo, and Bo I would not attempt to. Rosetani. Rosa Tiny. Rosa Tiny. <laughs> he is a uh, black belt Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? Yes, sir. Welcome, Bo. Thank you. I'm Thank glad you. you guys are here. So, Jeff, how did you become world champion? And what is that like? Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, it was in 2007. Is, uh, it was over 10 years ago now. And uh, they have a world championship every year in Los Angeles. And I was the first, um, it's a sport dominated by Brazilians. Right. So it comes from Brazil for the most part. I mean, you could take the history back. It starts like in Japan. The Japanese moved to Brazil. Oh, yeah. The Brazilian. I thought it was a Japanese thing because I remember I used to watch TV and the Japs would go, oh, <laughs> oh, did you so? <laughs> you know, I used to love that. Yeah. Yeah, but go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, I grew up loving pro wrestling and all that stuff. So, you know. Jiu-Jitsu fit right in there for me, you know. But when you first started out, did you imagine one day you would be world champion? Did you, did, did you strive for that or did I'd, it just happen or what? Yeah, pretty early on, I had lofty goals. Pretty early on. I started when I was about 17. And within the first week, I remember talking to my Jiu-Jitsu coach and telling him like, you know, he's a Brazilian immigrant, telling him like, oh, his name was Frangia. And, Frangia, I want to do what you do for a living. I want to be respected. I want to be tough. Yeah. I don't want anyone to be able to just mess with me if they wanted. I could fight back. All that stuff that he, his image presented, I wanted that. And he was a world champion himself. He had won the world championships in Brazil and then immigrated here to America. And that's where I met him in Santa Barbara. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, so and now you own stores or shops? Or I, have, I have my own school in uh, Santa Barbara. Right on. It's man. called Goodland Jiu-Jitsu. Goodland. Goodland. Right on. Yeah. And how did you get involved in it? To become a black belt? Um, I gave him his black belt. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, he's my student. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. But he's my boxing coach. Oh, right so, on. So jiu-jitsu and boxing are, you know, they're separate. Oh. So he teaches me boxing and I taught him jiu-jitsu. Right on. Yeah. He asked me the question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the student shall become the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, it was a long process. I started training martial arts when I was like 17. I started in Taekwondo, which is like a Korean karate form. Right. And, uh, and then I did that for about five years. And then I realized in a street fight, me personally, the way the style was, I, I needed a box. I boxed amateur, had a few amateur bouts, uh, about 12 fights within about four years, which is not really many fights at all. But uh, I trained and trained and trained and was a sparring partner for a couple of professionals a few different times. And then I got into submission and grappling and got into jujitsu. I met Jeff in about 2002, worked really hard over a long period of time and ended up getting a black belt. Are you surprised at how well things turned out for you? Because when you first got into it, you had no idea mm -hmm. that it would work its way out the way it has. It, you know, God just, uh, God was with me the whole time. Absolutely. I shouldn't be alive right now. I mean, I'm really rough around the edges, but I believe in Jesus. So, yeah, he, he was with me the whole time. Absolutely. I, I never thought that I would have gotten to like a professional level of boxing and gotten to a, a, a reasonably proficient level at jujitsu for an old guy. Can a person earn a living doing this? Yes, sir, he can. Oh, really? Yeah. And so, so now you're Jeff's body guy as well? Um, I'm an un unpaid bodyguard. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just good friends. <laughs> right. 
Uh, who is Will Link? What's Will Link first name? Jocko Will Link, yeah. Who, who is he? Jocko Will Link is a guy that I worked with when I lived in San Diego. I lived there for five years. And um, when my time with Jocko terminated, I moved back to Santa Barbara, where I am now, and opened my own gym. But I used to work for Jocko. Oh, I see. He owned the gym that I was the He the looked coach like a at. tough guy, too. He's, he's the number one reason that I started getting into listening to politics and eventually found my road to you. Oh, really? Yeah. I read that he mentioned politics and somehow or another you realized, you know what, you can no longer be a liberal. He, Does he, he call you a liberal? He called me a liberal. Like he, he was like, in, a, in a nice way. Right. In a nice way. He wasn't trying to insult me. He was just stating facts. He, was like, he said something about, you know, most kids in California already grow up, you know, and they're probably liberals. And he said, like Glover, for example. Glover's <laughs> probably a liberal. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> what is, that doesn't sound good. So I went and started, you know, YouTubing. I was in my jujitsu bubble. Yeah. The jiu-jitsu bubble has no racism, no hate. There's no right. isms in jiu-jitsu. Right. You right know? So, so when I heard Jocko say that, I stepped out of my jiu-jitsu bubble into like liberal, conservative, all, hey, all this stuff and realized, whoa, what is going on? Yeah. Like, there's people that like, don't like me because I'm white. There's people that tell me I'm systemically racist. I was like uh, so unaware of this at the age of 33. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So you were paying no attention to politics at all, just doing your thing. I was so caught up in the jujitsu world, which is, which is a beautiful thing, because a lot of people get into that jujitsu world as a break from stuff like that. Right. You know, as a relief. I kind of like that idea that when you're into that, you're not into politics, <clears throat> you're just kind of doing your thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're concerned about the country and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, are you a liberal or conservative? Oh, I'm, I'm a conservative, I'm not, I'm not a liberal. I'm Have not. you ever been a liberal? I was headed that way uh, because that's basically the direction I was told to be in, in, uh, in California. Yeah. Um, I, I knew that something was wrong. I hadn't paid, a pen, paid attention to politics at all since, since I'd gotten out of the Navy like way back in 97. And my dad was a hardcore Republican through, uh, through the 80s and he was military. And just uh, the way that everything's going right now in society, it's just like open the borders, let everybody through. If you have any problems with that, you're a Nazi or you're a racist. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be that. So I guess, I guess, yeah, every, everything's cool. Okay, everything's okay. <laughs> and then about six or eight months ago, maybe nine months ago, Jeff introduced me. He goes, dude, you got to watch this guy. And I go, okay. And I knew something was wrong, but I really didn't feel free to talk about it. I'm, I'm half Italian. Does that mean I'm half white? Because the Italians aren't white. We, I hear Italian. the Italians are white. I don't, but you look white. I don't know. I look white, yeah. so I get identified you as white. <laughs> you white. You white. You <laughs> white. <laughs> and uh, I watched the show, and I just went, oh, my God. Like, this guy is saying a lot of things that I feel. Yep. And, and he's saying, look, you know, at white people, if you don't start standing up for yourself, you're going to be hiding behind rocks. Absolutely. And I have a friend who has friends in South Africa. And last year when I told you I was in Vegas, I got a phone call and she said, some of my friends in South Africa got attacked. Yep. And I was like, what are, you, what are you talking about? I had no idea what was going on. And slowly I started watching your show and I started, the lights have started to come on in the last nine months. Like, whoa, you know, we, we had uh, like, don't hate, don't, don't act out, but be aware of what's going on speak and speak up. up. No hate. And, and, uh, is there's a lot going on in our world, in our country right now, you know. And, I can't yeah. even imagine being a man, being a human being, period, but especially being a man and people attacking me and I can't say anything about it. Yeah. I don't know how you live with that. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy, especially if we put on anything that has our, our president on it. Like if right. I put on a Trump hat, yeah. we're going to have to watch our backs because someone's going to throw something at us. They could physically attack us and... Uh, it's pretty scary times. But the, but if they do, wouldn't you just normally attack back? Because you have a right to defend yourself. There would be an automatic judo chop. <laughs> yeah, I would, right. I would throw somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, I don't, I mean, knowing how to fight is one thing, right? But but understanding that there's an evil agenda in our government that's that, that's that right, is uh, not, not for the good of the people. And, and the people that are on the side of that don't understand what they're getting involved in. Scary times. Yeah, and you're the reason that we're able to to see that. You were the one that, that helped wake me up and helped wake Jeff up. So yeah. when he invited me here, I, I wanted to come because I wanted to thank you. Amazing. Because most pastors, not all, not all, not all, but not most. Not all, not all, not all, but most. <laughs> a lot of pastors out there are not, it's uh, 
children of the lie. They're, they're just, yeah. hey, everything's okay. Just yeah. tithe and bring your families and everybody can come in. And if you raise your hand and say, this isn't right, you know, racist or you're not a Christian or, yeah. or you know, Jesus doesn't, you know, Jesus has open borders. Well, uh, it doesn't work that way. Most pastors are beta so, males. Beta males. Beta male. They beta the gospel out. That's right. <laughs> well, Jeff, are you a Christian? I'm not. You're not. And so you attended my church service for the first time a couple of Sundays ago now. Yeah. What was your impression of it? Um, I didn't hear you talk about <clears throat> really too much what I would say churchy stuff. Yeah. It was you were just connecting with people yeah. and hearing their stories and trying to uh, give them some feedback. Yeah. Um, I thought that was great. Were well, you expecting me be, to be <clears throat> quoting from the Bible and a little bit, the Lord? A little bit. I've seen some of your shows where you have like a Bible there. Right. And um, sometimes I bring what I feel like carrying it, but sometimes I don't. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's the, I agree with almost everything you say. That's yeah. why I'm like, man, am I a Christian? And I'm, Bo is like one of my best friends, and we've been talking about our beliefs for as long as I've known him now for 20 years. We have a now. lot of debates together, a lot yeah. of tough discussions. It's good. It's good. And, uh, you know, I'm open minded. I was raised as an atheist. You know, my mother raised us secular. We, you know, we don't celebrate Christmas, you know, kind of, kind of, you know, lifestyle. So. You didn't have an easy childhood. I was going to ask you, tell me about yeah. what was it like growing up with you, Jeff? Um, it wasn't bad. There was no abuse. Nobody hit me. Nobody touched me. You know, nothing like that. Right. I had, I had, Bo just touched me. <laughs> I had um, two brothers. I'm the middle brother. So we were all within two years of each other. A lot of fighting, a lot of wrestling, hence oh. the jujitsu. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, in a way, I'm really thankful for that. I'm really thankful I grew up with two brothers that I kind of got to rough, rough house with and Absolutely. wrestle around with. Absolutely. You know, it kind of toughened all three of us up yeah. a little bit. My, my parents split up when I was seven and then got back together when I was like 19. They remarried? They, they re- so Did they, they divorce or They, they never separated? married in the first place. Oh, they never married? No, my, oh. my, my, my older brother is my half brother, and then my younger brother and I are from my dad. All right. So, yeah, it's, it's a mixed up family. It's, I don't like it. Yeah. And so you were six years old when your father left. You were about seven, seven, seven or eight. What was it like for you personally when he left? That Were was you, the first big thing I remember being mad about in my life and holding resentment and a grudge towards my mother and my father. Yeah. You know, I have such strong uh, problems in that area. When I hear you talk about that, it always like, oh, me and Bo are always like, oh, man. Yeah. You know, you need to like let go of your anger. And I just have the hardest time. I'm so resentful. It's one of the easiest things. It is the <clears throat> easiest thing to overcome. You would never experience anything else as easy as it is to overcome anger. I mean, I hear you say that. I've watched a lot of your shows, and I try so we hard. We both are just like, wow, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard, you know. It's I hard. Have a lot Why of do you think it's hard, Bo? Because of what's happened and the memories I have. Like, we both like had what? dysfunctional families. What was it like for you? Um, there, I did get hit, and there was screaming and yelling. Um, the first time I remember, remember, like, when you box, you know what it's like to get rocked. Like... You get hit and you're just like, okay, right. you know, you're lightheaded and you're just, everything kind of feels fuzzy for a second. I remember getting rocked when I was about 10 years old by my dad and, uh, and there was constant hitting across the face. And I think when you hit a little kid across the face quite a bit, it changes your mind, changes Absolutely. your chemistry. Yeah. So there was a lot of screaming and yelling and some other things that I have memories of possibly, uh, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was just a chaos, right? My parents divorced when I was three and, uh, both remarried, had other kids and my brother, my old, my older brother and I were the only siblings from the same mom and dad. We were just kind of the, the leftover kids. Amazing. So Amazing. there's a lot of, uh, a lot of anger there from, you know, my mom and my dad, cause they're both very manipulative, very, yeah. uh, very, uh, just really not they don't want to have anything to do with like God or uh, making correct decisions for their own lives or having or just going you know what I need to live a good life for my kids I need to live a good life for me there's nothing like that it was right. that post World War II like baby boomer generation like just the kind of me generation I think I don't know so is it true that your father you call your father Ra rageaholic he was a rageaholic he still is he's 80 years old and he <laughs> he won't show it now but I know if I asked him a couple of questions, you know, and I and I he would it, it, he'll come it'll come right back. Are you, you know? afraid of him? Uh, not anymore, but I just feel sorry for him now more so than the anger. And why? Why um, do you feel sorry for him? 
because he had two pretty amazing sons that he wanted nothing to do with. Yeah. And it used to, it used to really just made make me crazy. And I was so angry because they left us. They, you abandon a kid, it, it causes all kinds of emotional problems. And I've had emotional problems most of my life. Amazing. And in the last two years, God's just kind of settled the wounds down. Some, some things happened and came into play that have really settled. God's just like, I got gotcha. you. You know, and just some circumstances happen that have made things more livable, and it's settled me down. But it's just the, uh, wh what did you ask me again? I'm sorry. Uh, why do you feel sorry for him? Oh, um, because he's 80 years old and he doesn't want to like stop doing the things he's doing. He's like, I'm trying to change and be the person that I feel like my father in heaven would want me to be. And there's no conscious effort for that from my father or my mom. It's just yeah. they're just people that are, I guess, children of the lie. So instead of being angry about it, I'm, I'm changing to just like, well, I've got to figure something else out. Anger's not working. So is it true you, you, uh, your mother used a horse whip on you as a kid? Yep. What yeah. does that mean? What's a horse whip? The kind of, uh, you ride the horse whip? <coughs> well, my, the my, leather strap. <laughs> my, my mom remarried to a step, my stepdad. He was a doctor, very wealthy man. And he was actually really cool with me. He was a, he was a Canadian. Uh, joined the American military, served as a doctor in Vietnam, and came back and my mom divorced my dad and married him, had a couple kids, and his daughter had a horse, a pony, and uh, Allie got all the pony riding lessons, and every day I came home from school, I had to clean the pony poop. That was my job, because I came from the Italian guy, you know, got to get the WAP out there yeah. and scrape up the poop, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm a WAP, so I could say that. What well, one day, mean? without papers, that's an illegal immigration yeah. thing for the Italians. So. <laughs> so one day I came home from school. I didn't do my homework assignment, I think. And she had gotten off the phone with my teacher because I wasn't doing well in school. I had just moved in with my mom in seventh grade from my dad's house. And she picked up the horse whip and she goes, get in your room. And I thought it was just going to be another. Right. She, uh, she went crazy. She lost her mind and raged on me. I'd never seen anything, I still haven't seen anything like it. And her wow. eyes were rolling back in her head. She was screaming and just beating me. And a couple days later, I saw the black and blue marks across my backside. And we had gone to a counseling session after that with the family. If I would have shown the counselor my marks, they would have taken me away right there. Really? It was insane. Why did she hate you so much? Uh, I didn't know my mother had violent anger issues until I moved in with her in, se in seventh grade. That's why your father left. And they were both rageaholics. Yeah. They're both very angry people, and they just. And so, why did she hate you so much? Three. I think because I looked like my father the most. Yeah, I was going to ask you, did you look like I him? I look like that's crazy. Yeah, you're always right about that. Like yeah. we notice that when he, when you're, you're like, you'll talk about somebody's mom, and they're like, no, I don't have those feelings toward my mom. <laughs> then you're like, yeah, I do. You look like your dad. <laughs> but I look. I was the one that looked like my dad yeah. the most, yeah. and I and I resembled him the most, and so I was the one that was punished. And I was also the weakest. I was the younger brother oh, and yeah. she had two more kids and I was used as the maternal for them. I took care of my little brother and sister, changed their diapers, fed them. And my mom just would do her own thing and they would argue and fight and I was taking care of them. And I was also the one that was hit. It sounds like a Cinderella, poor me story, but it's true. It happened. Not to me, it's not and real. It, I totally understand. It's real yeah. and it messed me up bad. Yeah, and of course. I'm still Did here. Did you ever ask, you still what? I'm still here and I'm thankful to be yeah. here. So. Did you ever ask her why did she hate you so much that she would treat you that way? As an adult, have you asked? <laughs> she came back into my life last year for a brief moment. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a disabled veteran. Three years ago, I received my disability from the VA and it saved my life. I never right asked on. anybody for a dime. Right I've always on. struggled and gone job to job. Uh, VA uh, asked me to buy you lunch today, just saying. Well, that's because I'm part <laughs> Jewish. So anyway, <laughs> my mom's a Jew, so I can make the joke. Your mother's a Jew? Yeah, she converted to Judaism. Really? So, yeah, her third husband was a rabbi, no joke. Wow. <laughs> Anyways. She, she's reaching for salvation. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she came back into my life, I think, and I don't know, maybe because she heard I was financially stable and I was looking for a home with my VA home loan. So she came back into my life last year. It was all nicey-nicey. And I said, Mom, do you, do you remember hitting me with a horse whip? Do you remember the times you would lose your mind on me? No, I don't remember. Oh, I'm so sorry I did that. But she would literally say she had no memory of it. And I was like, something didn't, you know. And so a couple of things happened and I just decided, mom, I don't think I should be talking to you anymore. You, you, yeah. you, um, you still are doing the same things. She likes to lie and, yeah. 
and uh, she has a very victim mentality, yeah. you know. Um, Amazing. And uh, so I, I just, I don't want to be angry at her, but uh, I just can't really have it in my life. Do you want to overcome the anger? Absolutely. I'm going to tell you how in a minute. Uh, Jeff, your father uh, had been a meth addict or something like that? He's, he's been a drug addict as long as I can remember, yeah. All of your life? Oh, yeah. Did you ask him how did he become that way? Or why? Uh, he t I remember him trying to explain it to me as like he needed it for work. The jobs he chose, he was like, I'm a tow truck driver, I'm a this, I'm a this, I need it to stay awake. Or, you know, there was all these reasons why he tried to like, you know, present it to me as if it wasn't like a problem. Yeah. And do you love your father? Um, yeah. You love your father? I still have that same love from when we were a little kid, when I was a little kid. I still like look up to him and have that, I remember that. Yeah. But the past, you know, 20 years, the interactions have all been horrible. And what do you mean? They've all been negative. They've all Who's been him. Father? Like, like I, would, I, would, I would see him and he would be extremely drugged up, oh. you know, and it'd be hard to talk to him. He got a lot of issues. He has a lot of issues. Yeah. Have you ever told him, I love you and I want to want to be with you, want to get to know you? Yeah. You told him that? Yeah, we've, we've, we've made friends and then fought and then made friends and then fought and it's this cycle that just keeps happening. So you said he said he got on the drug because he needed the energy to drive and all that? I mean, that was one of the excuses, you know. It was also like he was like, you know, he liked partying when he was younger and that phase never kind of like left his life. He just was always kind of like habitually disappointing. Yeah. What is, uh, so how are your brothers doing right now? Uh, my older brother, he's, you know, he's, uh, he hides a lot. He kind of stays in his room. He still lives with my mom. Really? Yeah. How old is he? He's 40 something. Beta bear. Yeah. It's sad. I love, I love Eric. I love my brother, you know, but he does not want to do anything. He can't. He can't. He just he wants can't. to hide from the enemy. world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's paralyzed. You're going to have to help him. I'll tell you how. I, I try. I try. I've tried to get him into my jujitsu gym yeah. and he was coming for a while. Yeah. But, you know, he complains that he's so little and he has all these problems that hurt and he can't like do squats. You sound just like your mother. <laughs> yeah. It's always the something. emotional state of your mother. Yeah. I've tried. I've Absolutely. tried, you know. You become like what you hate, who you hate. So um, true. What is an aggressive atheist? Oh, but how's your other brother? Your, your, my younger, younger brother? brother, right? My, my younger brother, yeah. How is he? He's, he's coming up on 30. Oh, how's he? He got, he got married and moved to Texas. Him and his wife, they, they got married at a young age. Oh. And they're all into feminism. Oh, yeah. yeah. He married his mama. Yeah. And so, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 36. Really? How old are you? 47, sir. Amazing. Uh, what, you said that you used to be an aggressive atheist. Yeah. What is that? Uh, well, I was raised as an atheist, and I would have, you know, I would, I would spend hours and hours listening to Christopher Hitchens and all these really famous atheist guys have debates with Christians. Right. And I always wanted the atheist guys to win, kind of because it was like my home team. Right. You know what I'm saying? That was yeah. like my mom raised me like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see God. I, can't, I, don't, I don't believe in things I can't see. You know, that type of mentality. And I did that for a long time. I was like that for a very long time. Amazing. Yeah. So, boy, have you been married or are you married? I was married once. Oh, you were? Like 12 years ago, and I, I was still going through really, no, it was 2004. I was, I was, uh, uh, I had a pretty bad nervous breakdown in 02. Moved away to North Idaho where my grandfather was and uh, spent some time with him, and he passed away up there while I was up there. Yeah. And I stayed up there, and I got married, and I was still... I was coming out of the party phase and, and my, my ex still wanted to stay in it and it just didn't work. I was right. just a young man trying to, trying to do the right thing and was just really messed up. It didn't work out. You have, you have no children with her? I have no children with her. She had a boy. Oh. She had a boy. He's and, a good boy. And so what made you marry her? Honestly? You want to know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I had just come out of, like, like I said, I had a really bad nervous breakdown in 2002. And I'm going to say this out loud because it could help somebody out there. Absolutely. It's kind of embarrassing to me. Yeah. I don't like talking about it anymore, but I had confronted the person in my family who I believed had uh, touched me sexually when I was a kid a few different times. Right. I have foggy memories like when I was possibly asleep or I'd been waking up and something was going on. So I would confronted that person in the family. The family basically rejected me and just acted like nothing happened. 
and just kind of went like, well, Bo's just crazy, and just, it just acted like nothing happened, and I, I moved up to Idaho. And uh, when, when something like that happens, it fractured my mind. I mean, looking back 18 years, it fractured me pretty hard. Yeah. And I started dating this girl, and I started listening to the gospel at the same time. And uh, I had spent some time with my grandfather up there before he passed, and he was a devout Christian. He fought in World War II in the Battle of uh, the Bulge and Baston, came yeah. home alive. Amazing. And never missed a Wednesday or a Sunday at church. Never really talked, uh, you know, never really said much. He just he mowed the lawns at Carpentry at Baptist Church. Was there Sundays and Wednesdays? And I just knew I need to go to church. And, and uh, Baba just told me it takes time. It takes a whole, and it just takes time. But I was trying to not be in sin anymore. So I married her. <laughs> I didn't know any better. I was like, right. we should break up. But yeah. I was like, we had the mayor of uh, yeah. Sandpoint, Idaho, marry us. And it lasted like 28 days. It was, <laughs> but we were together like another two and a half years. The marry, we, we got an old, and, but we were still together. And it was really a rocky, tumultuous, typical broken kid family marriage type thing. Amazing. And so you are a Christian, right? Uh, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. Absolutely. But I've struggled with church and being close to people. And I, maybe it's because of my background as a kid growing up in the abuse. I have a hard time letting men close to me or people close to me um, or organizations. like So regular church seems to... Uh, be super liberal right now and I have a hard time fitting in. Yeah. And so when I heard you, this man's talking about Jesus and he's also talking about protecting America. And he's also talking about American citizens and, 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 you know, <laughs> keeping this, <laughs> keeping this nation great. Yeah. It don't matter if you're black or Mexican or Chinese or white, just please love this country yeah, and right. don't destroy this country while yeah, you're here. Right. Yeah. You know, my grandfather came here when he was 18 years old on a boat from Italy. And he wanted, he didn't even want the kids to speak Italian because he wanted them to be American. Right on. Nowadays, people are coming over here, screw America, let's get all our free stuff. Yeah. And <clears throat> long story short, sorry, I don't want to get on a, a rant. Uh, <laughs> we're passionate about it. So. And so, being a, when you became a Christian, were you surprised? I mean, you felt good when you first said, oh, I believe Jesus, Lord and Savior, right? Yeah. But after that, were you surprised <laughs> nothing changed? I was surprised that the 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 battle began for for him to go okay son i love you but you got a lot of stuff in you that's going to destroy you yeah and not really many pastors talked about if you're living with somebody you know, like don't be having sex outside right. of marriage like you got to live right yeah and yeah nothing was really changing yeah but i was trying i know so that's what once yeah. you become once people say that they're christian now they try to change themselves, and if they don't change, they feel guilty about that. And then you quit going and to they, church. Right. That's what happened to me. That's yeah. right. That's amazing. Yeah. I, uh, I got to ask you this, and I'm going to tell you guys how to overcome this stuff. Yes, it's sir. so easy. It makes you want to slap your mama. It's so easy. <laughs> 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 what, you, uh, what does it feel like for you guys to be white young men and being so hated in America and blamed for everything and <laughs> called white supremacists and all this, and you're not able to speak up for yourself. You're left out of the debate. You're left out of the discussion. It's kind of shocking. And if you disagree, all of a sudden, you, they hate you even more so. And then they call you white privilege and all that, and white men. I like Nazi that, the most when I get called a yeah, Nazi. Yeah, they call you Nazi. Yeah. I'm Italian. What is that like in your <laughs> private moments and when you're like seeing all this stuff and hearing this stuff, what does it feel like to walk the earth knowing that you hate it in this manner? Initially, it's very demoralizing. Yeah. You're just like, I, I must be a bad person. Surprised by it. Our ancestors did all this. But I just told Jeff today, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Yeah. They killed, there's still 1,111 men in their grave in the USS Arizona in Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Nobody's making the Japanese go over this every single day that you attacked America. Yeah. Nobody's saying that to them. Nobody's, I have jujitsu shirts with a big Japan logo on. Yeah, and you're okay to, he's okay to have that, but because we're white, yeah. and it's, it's very shocking. In fact, I just saw um, a group of little kids were filmed at a school, white kids, and they were all doing the Nazi salute. They were having a they were having a Nazi meeting. Yeah. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I know why they're doing that. Me too. Because nobody's protecting nope, those that's kids. That's right. Nobody cares. Nobody's what? protecting them. They're blaming them for everything. The, and the, nobody's showing love to them. And these kids are like, we got to protect ourselves. They're yeah. probably not getting 
uh, support from their parents. Right. So they're, they're looking to the only way that they know in history that stood up for whites and it's not the right way, but they're like, hell. it's, it's, this is, Are yeah. you afraid to speak up as a white man? Are you afraid to speak up when it comes to black people, and homosexuals and others? The only, the only reason that I'm afraid is that you have to look over your back. I just don't want to get into a physical altercation. Why not? Um, it, I'm not afraid of being into a fight. I can it's, tell you. It would hurt somebody though. He would, he just, would hurt somebody right. and kill him. It's just like, I, I don't want to go to jail. If I go to jail, I lose my VA benefits. I lose Even everything. Even if you're defending yourself, self-defense? I have no idea. I just, I just don't want it to go bad, you know? And, and it's like, it's, it's a scary thing to be like, okay, it's, it's like Bo doesn't lose fights. That's the thing. He's not like, going to get into an encounter and lose. It's, I, I, if it's, somebody it's, attacks it's, him, yeah. it's gonna. If you just come around and see what happened at the afterwards, you're gonna be like, yo, that guy. <laughs> that's the guy laying down. So he's the one in trouble. Yeah. It, it's, it's never gonna go scary, the other way with it's Bo. It's just a scary thing. I mean, everybody can lose a fight. Anybody can lose a fight. But if I'm physically yeah. attacked because of what happened to me as a kid, there's a switch that goes off in my yeah. head, and and I'll protect anybody that I know and love. You know, and I'll lay my life down for him, and I think a lot of people would. But it's just a scary time to where I'm like, hey, that's not right. And then there's a bunch of freaking purple-haired dudes looking at you, wanting to do you in, and you're just like, wow. Did you is... expect God to take away all your suffering when you became a Christian? I think a lot of pastors sell that. I think some pastors sell that. Not all, not all. Right. But some pastors sell a cush life. Is that supposed to happen? No, I don't think so at all. I don't, I mean, sometimes, I tell you how, it, but it does happen because Christ came that you may have perfect peace. And I'll tell you in a minute. It's, it's just crazy out there right yeah, now. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, insane, I'm, but yeah. it's so beautiful to be alive yeah. at this time yeah. to deal with evil, especially when you return to good. It's so good. I'll tell you in a minute, Bo. All right. Um, what are you feeling thinking right now? I feel very thankful that I can talk to someone and we can talk to someone and, and we can say, look, I'm scared to be white in America. Yeah. And, and if we get another leftist, which in my opinion, they're not left. They're, they're the modern Bolsheviks. They're communists they're right here. They're it's communists insane. on American soil. Yeah. And the media is treasonous. Yes. The left media, it's treason. Yeah. And they're calling Donald Trump Hitler and a Nazi and all this. I'm like, do you know what Stalin did to his, to his own people that followed him? Yeah. He had everybody killed. But you got to realize and Trump's that just loving people. He's not hurting right. anybody. And, and people are just saying this horrible, horrible stuff every single day about, about him, about us. And I'm like, this is not leading to someplace yeah, good. Yeah, that's not going to go. That's this not going to end well. <laughs> this is not. It's scary. Though, scary. They it's adore, scary. Their daddy is Satan. So they're doing what they're supposed I'm, to be I'm doing. Sh I'm shaky because I finally, you know, I'm finally saying the truth. It's scary times. Yeah, but they're doing their job. They're supposed to push evil. And then men and women of God are supposed to push good. And good will overcome evil. So I, I see that they're doing what they're supposed to do. And their father has no love. He has no truth. And his mission is to destroy good. Because Satan made a promise that he's going to destroy every man, woman, and child. Yeah. So he's yeah. using his children to do that. The liberal media, the black race hustlers, the never Trumpers, the rhino Republicans, all these people, they're doing their job. So uh, we should be grateful and I'll tell you how, but we should be grateful that to recognize they're doing their job. So we got to do our job. We got to overcome evil with good. Okay. Uh, what is it like for you uh, to Thank be you. white, young male, walking around knowing that you hate it because you are a white, straight, conservative male? It's interesting now. You know, I never was aware of it. I had no idea. Like I said, I was in that jujitsu bubble from age 16. Right. You know, I had no understanding of politics or anything. I didn't know what pro-choice or whatever, pro-life. Right. I didn't know what any of that meant. Right. I remember in high school, being so unaware, talking to girls in high school, and they would say, I'm pro-choice or I'm pro-life. And I was like, I like wrestling. <laughs> I don't know what any of this means. Yeah. So, you know, when I was, like, when I was like 33, like several, three, three years ago, and I started looking into this and realizing what's going on, well, there are, they don't, there's a whole large group of people that don't like Christian white men that are, you know, alpha male -y. And I was like, whoa, I never noticed this. Yeah. And it's shocking to me because I've never really like been racist. I don't understand how I can be accused of something I've never really done myself. Right. You know? You realize that they're just doing this to intimidate white people. Sure. Keep blacks angry and others angry so they can take advantage of you. 
they could get the votes and the power. Yes. They're doing their job. They're supposed to deceive, rob, steal, and kill. Well, it worked. I felt, I felt you know, for a long time, like, something, like, <laughs> yeah. I should be guilty for something. Right. Yeah. And then hearing you talk, and you're like, you know, don't feel guilty for something you haven't done. And plus, the way they, they, the way they put it out there, half of what they say happened didn't even happen. You know, they just add to the lie, making the lie bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. in order to, all this stuff about slavery and Jim Crow. How do we know which history to listen to? Most of it is to? a lie. How do I know which history to listen to? Don't listen to any of it. Just let it go in one and out the other because it has nothing to do with you today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of controlling. Dang. Really, it's just a setup. Yeah. It's, uh, I think the media is pushing little kids to shoot each other. And they are. Like, because we had one guy on the left a few weeks back shoot yeah. people and one guy on the right. And right there, I was like, the media is pushing people over the edge on both sides. Absolutely. You have to, like, uh, Seems like there's somebody behind it, like, yeah. telling are. everyone exactly what to say. Yeah. And it's Do really you, we had a, uh, I participated in a street pride parade this past weekend. It was the first one in the wow. history of America. What was that like? And it, it was amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I couldn't Amazing. believe it. I'm like, because when I grew up, I always loved America. And I used to see, when we first got out of a cup, little black and white TV on the plantation, I used to see white Americans celebrating the 4th of July. They would have flags and they loved the country. And I was thinking, one day, I'm going to do that. I want to love and celebrate the country. And for me to be doing it now is amazing to me. That's awesome. Amazing. And so when we were up there, we had, we were, uh, uh, standing in front of a Planned Parenthood uh, abortion mill, and all these fat lesbians came out. And, lesbians. And lesbians. Lesbians. <laughs> and most of them are like really fat. They're like fat all over. You Invisible. know how you be fat in parts. You know, big old like, ankles, huh? Big old everything. <laughs> and I'm like, why y'all? Why y'all so fat? <laughs> fat lesbians. <laughs> and then radical beta male homosexuals, and, oh, yeah. and they came over to our side, Antifa, and all them. But I had a blast with them. Wow. I felt no fear. I dealt with them. And some of them were yelling at me. And I was saying, come on over here. I wanted them to come to me. Because I want to know, what are you so mad about? What happened to you? You're you know? amazing like that with people. Yeah, I want to know what happened. Yeah. You know? Because I don't, they just can't see. They don't see what they're doing. They're traumatized, like you always say. They're, yes. they're very yes. traumatized people. Yeah. And then somebody comes along and radicalizes them. Absolutely. Oh, they can't kill people. They can't By repenting, admitting that you're wrong. Okay. Are you a lesbian? Yeah. You a lesbian? Yeah. Are you not a Christian? Oh, a Christian okay. can't be a lesbian. A lesbian can't be a Christian. Well, Satan technically, is your daddy. sir, sir. Satan is your daddy. No, honey. No, Let Satan me is your daddy. The Bible to you no, a lesbian can't explain the Bible. You don't know the Bible. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Romans 1. Oh, yeah. Try Romans 1, sir. Satan is your daddy. What do you think of the great white hope? I got no problems with Donald Trump. Yeah, I love the He's the great white hope. Yeah, I love I his attitude. A, I like how yeah. he talks to people. Yeah. I like how he... He loves all people. He deal with you. He doesn't care what color leader. you he's are. He's a gracious and If you're black or white, yeah. male or female, when you're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah. When you're right, he got your back. Yeah. And he put the country first. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Love all that stuff. He's I, I, for a while, I was listening to the left and what they were saying about him, and I was just, I didn't really pay attention to politics for a long time. It was just Trump's this, 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 that, and the other. And then I finally listened to him. I'm like, this guy's not That's anything right. like they're saying. He's just, yeah. he's a very decent fellow talking to people, very matter of fact. Yeah. You know, and that's 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 not a, a biased opinion. That's just an observer's opinion. That's he's, right. He's a very gracious, gracious leader. And he's been doing so much. He's an example of what we all should be doing, dealing with the issues of life. It was he just is hated, and he is just. It was it was one of the first subjects I remember delving into when I started realizing, okay, I'm going to get out of jujitsu. I'm going to listen to politics for a little bit. And it was like, okay, the wall subject. I'd never thought about it. 
I always, I mean, I, I never really, really thought about oh, it. Oh, the wall going up. The wall, the wall going up. Going up. <laughs> but I remember, I remember as a little boy thinking like, we don't have a wall? We don't have a wall between us and other right. countries? That's crazy. Yes. And that was one of the first things I was like, okay, well, who's, who's on the side of making a wall? Donald Trump. I was like, okay, well, I'm on his side now. <laughs> That's you know? right. I was like, what? that makes no sense to me we, that we don't have a wall between us and another country. It's time to heat up this interview. So I'm gonna have to throw yes, you sir. guys on the hot seat. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna go back and forth, Anik. Hot uh, seat. <laughs> quick answers, answer as Pow. quickly as possible. <laughs> uh, let's see here. The hot seat. So Jeff, this is for you first. Batman or Superman? Ooh. Oh, Batman. Yeah. Uh, should transgenders be allowed in women's restrooms? Hell no. <laughs> So True or false? Feminism Sorry, and sir. cancer. True. Is the earth flat? Hell yes. yes. <laughs> 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 Sorry to say hell. <laughs> it's flat. Um, would you date a BBW? What's that? What's a BBW? Big black woman? Yeah. <laughs> a B. <laughs> I just don't Beautiful like... Beautiful woman. Okay. Beating those fat women. I don't like bigger women. I'll be Me honest you. with you. Yeah. How about you? Uh, oh, loves big women. Oh, he does? Really? Oh, yeah. Why well, you gotta put them right on the bus like I'm just that. kidding. <laughs> I don't like them too big. Are people naturally good or evil? Evil. Ooh, that's a good question. I never thought about that. Some. Evil. Some. Not all, not all, not all. I would say evil. Man, that's a tough question. Would you rather have no sex for a year or go oh, vegan man. for a year? Oh, Jeff. God. <sighs> vegan for a year. Uh, incels, beta, alpha males. Man, I feel bad for those dudes. Those yeah. guys are beta males. Bad. That's, that's, jujitsu saved me in, from that. Incel or the in, involuntary celibate, yeah. correct? Yeah. The yeah. virgins. They're having a hard time. Yeah. Uh, Bo, do you ever mansplain? I think that's a, that's a poopy word. That's <laughs> a, it's a, that word is, that's just a feminist word. You know that made up by women who hate men. Yeah, yeah. My, gr my girlfriend actually hit me with that word the other day, and I, and I had to put a stop to it. Right so, on. No. Darce or guillotine? That's for him. <laughs> Darce choke. <laughs> Darce choke. <It's, laughs> let me do it to Bo real quick. This is the Darce. It's like this. <laughs> so I can choke him this way, and he'll go to sleep. <laughs> and then I'll take his lunch money. Is it okay for wives to keep, to keep making babies? Yes. Right on. Truckload. Oh, do people say it's not okay for white people to make babies? Yeah, they want white people to become a minority so they can take over America and destroy it. Yep. So you've heard people say white people should stop making babies? Oh, yeah. Jeez, and they don't, nobody gets, no, they don't, no one gets in trouble for saying stuff like that? white people don't say anything, they just swallow it up. And you've seen the ad, I saw the ad where a little baby had like racist and all these things that like they're, they're trying to prove that little white babies are genetically racist. Yeah. And I'm like, dude. Yeah, how is it? Uh, I'm sorry that, uh, I'm sorry that Europeans conquered this place and, and did everything, and now you yeah. guys are mad about it. I'm really sorry. <laughs> sorry about That's that. That's right. If it weren't for white people, there would be no America. Yeah. I gotta ask you guys this, and then I'm gonna tell you how to overcome. Yes, I sir. recommend. A lot of white males are get uh, upset because no one is complaining about what the Jews are doing in supporting mm. the destruction of America. They mm. say that you know the Jews want open borders. They want. Sure. They're pushing all this perverted stuff, and mm -hmm. if you say something about it, you're calling anti-Semite. Uh, yeah, anti-Semite. And so white guys, not only are they feeling the pressure from <laughs> the rest of the world just yeah. for being white, straight, conservative male, but they are also feeling the pressure if they sh should complain about Jews, whether they write about it or not, right. they should have the right to complain about it or speak up yeah. about it. What do you guys think about that? That's messing with free speech, right? Yes. I should well, be able to insult whoever I want. That's right. If you take away my ability to insult everybody, I can't have friends anymore. <laughs> he insults everybody. <laughs> I can't be friends with you unless you're going to let me make fun of you. And that's if I right. can't make fun of everything about you, I'm the same this way, isn't man. fun. That's you, right. And I, you know, I can't get butthurt when somebody mocks me. So what do you, re what do you think about that, Bo? I think, I think that if somebody's messing up, even in the Old Testament, God checked his children. Yes. He checked them hard. Yeah. Hard. So everybody should get checked. So if, you're, if, you're, if you're messing up, it's not because you're a Jew. But if you're Jewish and you're and you're messing up, you need to be checked. And if you're going to pull the anti-Semite thing on me, guess what? My mom's a Jew. I can pull my own Jew card. All right. <laughs> so don't even start with that. So know? how should the white guys deal with that? What should? How we should need to they... stand our ground. Yeah. We need to start standing up for ourselves. 
and it's 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 they're going to want to ask you what, yeah. what, what are we to do i, I want to stand not, my ground but no matter thing, what they're going to call angry. us yeah they're going to call us because if you get mad you're going to walk into their trap right because an anger makes you carry out some crazy act yeah and then they'll say this is white supremacists and then they'll take the laws and take your guns and they'll they'll, they'll put you in prison yeah they'll, they'll they provoke to get a response and then they vote in policies for it that's yeah. right so do you guys feel believe that you can live on earth and have perfect peace Internally, uh -huh. uh, you say we can, so we're here to listen. Yeah. So. Do you believe that's possible? Um, I hope so. Judging by my history, I would say no. <laughs> hope so. You don't believe it's possible. Have you ever done anything in life to someone else, and you regretted it, and you thought about, wow, how did I do that? Sure. I, I can't imagine I did that. And you say, I would never do that again, and a little time would go by, and I mean, you find yourself doing it again. You just described my, one of my big problems, yeah. Yeah, and does it seem as though it's not you, but something else is driving you on the inside, like mm -hmm. something else is in charge of you, like causing you to- Like I conflict, like I talk to a part of me, I'm like doing something horrible, Yeah. getting revenge, yeah. you know, whatever it is, and, and, and the part of me is like, Jeff, stop it, and the other part of me is like, nope, sorry dude, I'm doing this. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I can't, and I'm like, you can't I'm help like, it. you know, you're gonna regret this later. Right. And he's like, I don't care, yeah. dude. This yeah. feels great right now. <laughs> yeah, it's this spirit made a home in you, and it's not you, but it feel like you, it sound like you, and so it seems like you, but it's not you. It's an identity that made a home in you, and that identity came from resenting your parents, especially your mother's first, wow. and then your father's. You become like what you hate, so that spirit that you have in you is your mother's spirit. You took on her identity. You think like her, you feel like her. You don't feel like a man or think like a man, you feel and think like a woman. Yeah. That's exactly what women think and feel. And so they're so insecure in that mode that they impose it on their children. They run the men off because the men don't know how to handle it mm -hmm. because their mothers are like that and they hated their mothers and they become attracted to what they hate. So they end up marrying women or dealing with women who just like mama. And so they become violent or little boys or something like that. Yeah. And the mother's not gonna tell you, your father loved you, he didn't leave you, he left me. He didn't know how to handle me. But because women, it's impossible, almost impossible women to be honest about themselves. Wow. The yeah. hardest thing in the world for a woman to do is tell the truth about herself. Wow. And, and uh, so she'll tell you about everybody else, but not herself. And if she had said to you, I did this to you, not your father. He never left you. He just didn't know how to handle me. He was married to his mother. I'm like his mother. You would not have hated your fathers. That would have been nice to hear that. Wow. Yeah. That's not, I don't think that's what But they about. hate men, so they turned, women hate men because they were not close to their fathers growing up. Their mothers turned them against their fathers too. That's, you just described my whole family. Yeah. 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 And so they hate men, so they hate the men's children, the ones who were born and unborn. And I look just like my dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he does. Hate. Yeah. And so the way for you to overcome that, because you can pray until the cows come home. Yeah. You can read the Bible until the cows come home. You can hoop and holler and shout until the cows come home. But if you don't forgive your mothers and return to your fathers because they can help it, God would never bring you into the kingdom. Dang. He cannot forgive you until you forgive them. Is it a process? Yeah, you got a process in that you got to see that you're wrong for hating them. Yes, it was absolutely wrong and evil for what they've done to you, but you're suffering the same evil because you hate them. You're judging, you're playing God. And so if you can see that yeah. it's there and it's wrong to hate, go and forgive them, God will forgive you. Don't ask for forgiveness and say, hey, I realize now I've done things that I wish I had not done and repeated them and couldn't help myself. I realized that you can't help, couldn't help yourself. I'm sorry for hating you for it. And the moment you forgive them, God will forgive you. Take that spirit away from you and give you back yourself. The little boy, the spirit you had prior to the trauma. But as long as you had an anger, okay. you will be separated from God and you will have no peace. Do we need to go to them and talk to them? Yes. Or talk to them on the you need to go to them and forgive them. If you can do it by Skype, because you need to face them. And the hardest thing in the world for a man to do, or a woman, is to face their mama. 
is like facing Satan himself. Oh, I used oh, yeah. to hate, I, would, I was more afraid of my mom than the police when I was a kid. Yes, because you hate her. She made you hate her, and whomever you hate control you. Yeah. They have control. That's why women control men, because every man, they get, every woman they get involved with is mama. So they become little boy with her. Yeah. Dang. So, this is so true. Yeah. All my relationships are all messed up like that. Yeah, because you, you're getting involved with mama. And so you can't deal with her the way a man should deal with a woman. A man is supposed to help a woman come out of her hellhole, out of that emotional state with logic, right? But because you're in there with them and you're trying to get something from them that they don't have, women do not have love to give. They don't have love. It's confusing because I have this part of me that's so like masculine and strong right. and I don't let anybody beat me in fights. You know, I win jujitsu and I teach my students toughness and right. come show up and do your workouts and, you know, don't give up easy and all this and that. But there's this other side of me that's like truly feminine. That's a cover, right. And, that's and a I, cover and I, up for your weakness. It is. And I respond so emotionally to things. I respond so like. Yeah. You know, like like a woman. Like beta. A, I respond like a beta. So beta we, both, we both wanted to come here and go, Jesse, don't yeah. even ask. We betas. Betas. <laughs> Team beta over here. Any man that has anger is a woman. Dang. Mm -mm. So does that mean my whole jiu-jitsu career is like, oh wait, was, was just a cover-up? Yeah, cover-up for what was missing on the inside. Does that mean my whole jiu-jitsu career wasn't special, though? It was special in that. It, <laughs> Jeff it just wants to hear Does it special. still have value? <laughs> <laughs> it was special in that you were able to physically succeed in it, right? But as far as the real you, it meant nothing. You just kind of covered it. Yeah, you covered it yeah. like a drug addict. I feel like that. Like, a, like your father covered his weakness up with meth. I feel like an imposter. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like, like people are like, Jeff, you're this amazing fighter. And I'm like, really? Like, people right. really believe? And I am. I know all these amazing moves. It's amazing know, to, to you know, throw other men down and beat them up. He, he does. He does have women. some good moves. But you can't even deal with women. Yeah, I can't. No, I Women struggle. beat you up and you're beating up men. Yep. Beta male. Beta. So you got to face your mother, yeah. both of you. You got to shake in your boots and don't expect anything from her. No. Don't expect her to apologize. Don't expect her to admit to anything. Don't expect anything. But forgive her. Don't ask for forgiveness. And don't say, I'm sorry I did this when I was young. You can help yourself. You became like her. So you did what you were a mirror image of your mother. So you acted like women act. So just say, I'm sorry for hating you. I realize now you can help it. Click, hang up. <laughs> 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 you got to go back. <laughs> In that very moment, God will forgive you. And then go to your fathers and just ask what happened. Let them know now you understand. I understand that what happened. I see now why you can deal with my mother. And in that very moment, your, your whole world will open up. Well, I don't like thinking about it. You're making my palms sweat. I just visualize I'm, doing I'm all that. I'm just scared yeah. of their response because my parents are very manipulative. Right. And as soon as my mom realizes she has a hook to come back into your life, she will. But I, I, I don't exactly know how I'm going to do it. But it has to be a way where it's like I can't really be around her. I have to protect myself. But like, will you forgive her? You'll be done with her. Sweet. Yeah, you won't. That sounds you, cruel for me to say, but no, she did a lot of damage. Yeah, you shouldn't let her around you until she repents. There you go. If she doesn't change, don't let her in your world because she, yeah. she will try to She'll get in there damage. and manipulate. And your wife and children, she'll kill them. She'll kill the cat, the dog, the grass, and everything. Dude, that you're describing her mom and her and, yes. and the relationship with my grandmother and her, even her mother. Absolutely. There was turmoil through three of those generations That's I remember right. seeing when I was a little so kid. You got, but you got to face it in order to be free. That's the only way because God said, how can you love him who you never see? and hate your father who's on earth and, and, and you have seen. So you can't love God and hate your earthly father because your earthly fathers are the, uh, the sons of God. And if you hate the son, you can never love the father. Dang. This is, this is true, true deep stuff here. This but, isn't like liberal church, Humbo. Huh, no, this is like man to man stuff. This is not like, yeah. This and is, so this you is gotta deep. be free and then you're going to love your parents in the right way because we're supposed to love our parents. And this just doesn't mean don't hate them. Don't be angry because they can help themselves. Speak yeah. up. Tell them the truth about themselves. Be honest with them, but don't hate them. And then you yeah. can love God and become sons and be fine. Yeah. So do I need to become a Christian? No, you need to forgive. You need to go and just forgive her for what she's done. It was wrong, but you only feel the pain because you're judging her. You hate her for what she did. Just stop hating her. Be honest with her, but don't, you know, speak up, but don't hate. 
and then you'll be fine. You become a son of God, and that's amazing. It's amazing. 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 And you would, would never like be attracted to that mama spirit again. Yeah, I'm I want to be done with that. Yeah. It's, it's ruined a lot of things in my life. Yeah. I hope it's not affecting my business. There probably is. It's affecting every aspect it's of your life. everything about yeah. us. And what you got to realize that God above is the man's God and Satan is the woman's God. Ooh. And so the woman, and so Satan is jealous of the sons of God, right? So he's using the woman to bring you down. He want to destroy the sons of That's God. That's factual. Spiritual battle, dude. That's factual. Yeah. And so, and what I tell women that a lot of them are starting to realize, wow, that is true. My mother did act like Satan. And so they start to forgive. They overcome it too. So they'll come back into that logic word. World of God. And then in the, it's in the Bible where it says your desire will be to, to, to head over the man. Yeah. Right, after the fall. Because right? when, at, when uh, Eve listened to Satan, yeah. uh, she no longer believed Adam, who listened to his father, right? So Satan turned her against the man. And so he told her to go and trick the man, draw him into your world. And she did it. So the woman became the man's God. And Satan is the woman's God. Dang. So when you forgive your mother's, that role, will, because Christ put it all back together, then now the woman is back subject to you, and you're subject to God. And then you can help her to overcome that fallen state. But you can't right. do it until you overcome her spirit. Both of you guys know exactly what a woman feels like, what she thinks, how she feels. That's what it means to be born again, to overcome the woman and return to the Father. That's why God said there will come a day when he would return the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. And that's what salvation is all about. Hmm. So you guys got a job, you got to go. Yep. You know, all that tough fighting you do, now you got to shake in your boots. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time though, it's time, time yeah. for me to do that in my life. Because if you ever get married, your kids don't have a chance. Yeah. And I would like that someday. I yeah. would like to have, be married and have a family. I never had kids because I was afraid I would do that to my kids. I was yeah. afraid yeah. I'd yeah. You will. You won't be able to help them. Yeah. Because I, I, it's I that spirit. It's not you. Yeah. It's the spirit in you. Yeah. It's a warfare between good and evil. God and Christ. Christ and man. Man over woman and woman over children. Christ restored that order. And so there is a way out. And the way out is that you must forgive. Just apologize for hating them. They can help him. And say sorry for hating you. And yeah. Forgive you. Yeah, I'm sorry. You don't for have to say you. it back to me. No, you know, don't even say that. Just say, leave it up to them. They want to apologize. Fine or not fine. You forgive them, and it's gonna be amazing. Really, it's gonna be like a a, a load would taken off you, and you'll become sons of God, and, you, and life would be amazing. I would love that. Would be amazing. I would love that. We gotta yeah. come back here at church again on Sundays. We gotta come back. <laughs> I'd like to do it once a month. So possible. can we put you on the hot spot real drive. quick? Oh, we, yeah. We have you a are, question. Right. We have a question. Yeah, ask me. Right. Okay, so hypothetical. Yeah. You're, inv you're invited by President Trump to a presidential ball, and you got to have a date. All right? You got three choices. Omar, AOC, or Big Mama Michelle. With and the arm on the pits. She got the armpits. With the nasty. armpits all, the all <laughs> nasty. All nasty like she has them. So and you don't know that they hate America. Which one would you go with? Neither. You have to make the choice. You have to pick. You have, have to, to pick, pick one. one. You have to pick one. Uh, well, since Omar is a known slut. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. We have our choice. You just blew my answer. All expectations of an answer out of the water. That was awesome. <laughs> what did you think I was saying? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We were thinking you might pick a white girl or something. <laughs> oh, well, I thought I had to pick one of them. Yeah, you go. Yep, that's well, it. That was all be, three. None of them are white, though. I might yeah. want to take your last slut. So she stole somebody's husband, has been said. She, I, heard she, I heard she stole somebody's husband or right. something. Right. Yeah. yeah, so she's a slut. She, she's, a, she's a pretty good looking. Slut! Lady. She's, she's a pretty good looking American. Yeah, evidently. <laughs> Who would win A, D, D, C? him and me? Absolutely, yeah. Between, you. Oh, he would. He'd he probably, would. He'd between probably the two of me. you. He'd heel hook me. Either I'll lay on him until he, he gets too tired or he'll heel hook me. I would win. I would definitely beat Bo. He would win. Once you overcome that anger, you're going to surprise see? him. See? <laughs> see? See? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jeff is, Jeff's one of the best in the world. He would definitely yeah, I know, win. man. That's right. He'd I win. know. Congratulations to that. Thank you. But I'm telling you, once you overcome that anger, it's going to be legitimate and you're going to get even greater. It's going to get better for you because you're going to be conscious. Inside, you have no fear, no doubt, no worry, no insecurity. None of that stuff would be there. Gosh. It would be perfect peace, I and you'll be conscious in all things. You're going to kick butt like 90 going nose. Mm. 
So Ninety going off, if, baby. If and when I, I do all this, like you got to do it. Back. Yeah. Okay. So when I do it, I'll come back on a church on Sunday and I'll tell you about it. Absolutely. Okay, I got to. I got to have accountability. Yeah. Yes, and it's going to be the last time you ever shaking your boots. All right. And you would never know depression and all that stuff again because all that disappear when anger, when God take the anger away. It's all that solution. disappear too. It gets rid of like every like Everything. twenty different problems. All fear, depressed, suicide, thought, whatever. Okay. You will stop being sex addicts and everything. Amazing. Did you have fun? I had a great time. Did you have fun? Absolutely. Thank you guys for coming. All right. Thank you I so really much. Appreciate it, baby. Appreciate it so much. God bless sir. you guys. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Let me hear from you. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, tweet, merch, all that good stuff. Next time on The Fallen State. How come so many black people believe in socialism? I mean, uh, shit, the government ain't gave us nothing. <laughs> you vote me. for the great white hope over again? What'd you say? Are you gonna vote for the great white hope? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> the great white hope, man. Yeah. Man, is this a, is this a, is this a, is this a, a skin? Oh man, you out of you smoking cavy. <laughs> what is cavy? You crack. <laughs> oh. <laughs>watching the fallen state we need your continued support donate to my non-profit here subscribe and like the videos here and tell everybody and their mama about the show